Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today we'll see one more frequently asked entry question. So can you explain how to set a dependency between workflows? Okay, so let's see, I have three workflows. Okay, so I want to set the dependency. So what is what is uh, the dependency here? Suppose <clears throat> not workflow one. Workflow two. Workflow three. So my, my requirement is first I want to run this. Okay, then I want to run this. Then I want to run the second. Okay, so this is the order I want. So first I want to run this one, then third or two, then second one. So I want to set the dependency between the workflow. So they can give a scenario like this also, or else they can directly ask a question. So can we can you explain how to set the dependency between uh, if you have multiple workflows? So there are many ways we have. The first thing is if the first you have to tell this one only. So if they ask a question like this. You have to ask them question. But they ask a question like this. So once they ask a question, you have to uh, again ask a question. So these workflows are in same folder or not. Okay. So don't blindly say answer here. If they ask this question, say that first ask them. So whether these three workflows in the same folder or not. If they say it is the same folder, then you can go with the worklet. Okay, you can go with worklet. So what I mean to say here is, so you can create a worklet. So when we go and create a worklet now, if they say if it is in the same folder, then you can create a worklet. Okay, we can call that worklet under a workflow. That means there we can set a dependency. If they say, if they say these workflows under same folder, then only this answer applicable. Just a moment. If they say if it is in same folder, then this approach you can say that. So like I can create a worklet. Okay, so we can connect this worklet to the particular workflow and there we can set the dependency. So that is the answer. And if they say these are not in same folder. So what will be the approach? I put in the same folder, you can create a worklet. Okay, we can call those worklet to the under one workflow. There you can set the dependency for that particular workflows. So we create a worklet here, it is the same folder. But the answer is suppose if they say if this workflow is not in the same folder, then there are many approaches. The first thing is okay, if it is the first. The first thing is you can create a zero byte file. And you can use any third party scheduler. Fourth one is event weight. Rice. Okay, so zero byte file through Unix script. Okay, so these are the different ways we have. Okay, so the first thing is zero byte file. So what I mean to say here is whenever the workflow one completed, okay, create a zero byte file. Like I mean to say that it's like some dummy file through Unix. 
So you can write some small script for that. So whenever this workflow completed, then just create a zero byte file. Suppose it's like a workflow one success. Okay. So you created some file like this. Okay. It's a zero byte file. There's not, I mean, so that nothing is there in the file, just like a file created. So Unix script, what we are doing is just we are writing some commands to create a file. That means whenever this particular workflow is completed, just create a zero byte file. That means if one is completed, create a file like this. Two is completed, success. Suppose it's got failed, then no need to create any file. That means it got failed. So here you can write a, some, some script like this. If the particular workflow is completed, create a file. If the workflow is not completed, don't create a file. So if that particular zero byte file is available, then run the required workflow. Suppose if this file is available, we want to run this as a second, right? If the, this file is available, run this. Okay, if this file available, anyway, this is the last one anyway. So we can create like this. So if this is created by this, if it is completed, trigger this. We'll make it as a three orders. Okay, so once this is created, that means this is completed. So once this is created, that means this is completed. You have to trigger this. I mean to say that whenever the workflow completes, just create a zero byte file. So if the zero byte file is available, then trigger the required workflow. So like that, you can create a zero byte file through Unix scripting. So based on that, you can trigger that particular workflow. So we can set the dependency like this. So I think it is clear. I hope it's clear for everyone. So what I mean to say here is, we need to create a small Unix script, okay, which creates a zero byte file. If the zero byte file is available, trigger the particular workflow. If it is completed, it will create this file. Then automatically we trigger this third workflow. If it is completed, then it will create this file. If this file available, trigger this workflow. So we are just creating a dummy file through Unix scripting. So once it is complete, just trigger that. So that's the way we can set the dependency by using a zero byte file concept. Similar way, third party scheduler. So as everyone knows that we have an Informatica scheduler. So by using the Informatica scheduler, we can schedule the jobs as per your requirement or as per your need, okay, business need. Okay, so along with that, we have a third party schedulers. We have a Atosis, Crontab, Tidal, we have many third party schedulers. Let's take some title. By using these third party schedulers also, we can set the dependency between dependency between the workflows. So that is that is everything. So that is as per the uh, project or as per the client requirement, what they're using. So based on that particular third party schedulers, you can set the dependency by using these third party schedulers. So in the third party schedulers, we have an option to set the dependency. By using that, you can do that. And third one, by using event weight and event wise. So based on the indicator file available, okay? If the indicator file available, just run it. I mean, so what I'm going to say here is if the indicator file is available, Okay, run run the workflow. Else, no. That means you have to wait. So uh, I think uh, everyone aware of this event weighted event trace. Right? So you just will, uh, wait for that file. If the file available, it will just trigger the workflow. Okay. If not, it will wait for the particular time what you mentioned there. Suppose I have mentioned there five minutes or forever. So. If you say five minutes, it will just wait for that file five minutes. Okay. Like if you want, 
I mean, you want to specify some particular time, then you can mention it in the event wait. Okay. Suppose if you mention forever, right? If the file is not available, it will lifelong, it will wait for that file. Whenever a file comes, then only it will trigger the workflow. Suppose for a one year file not comes, automatically it will wait for the time. So that is what the event wait and event raise. So, so like that event wait and event raise, you can set it. But I think uh, if you want to go uh, learn about this uh, event wait, just go through the, some videos. Okay, so this event wait and event raise just if the file is available, it will trigger the workflow. I, I, I want to make it like very clear. So what exactly we are doing this uh, uh, by using this event when event raises for this particular dependency. If that indicator file available, trigger the workflow. Else, don't trigger it. So similar concept. So this similar concept here. So the thing here is if the file is available, indicator file, trigger it. Else, wait for that file. That means if file is not there, that means the previous workflow not completed. So if this particular indicator file available, then trigger that else wait until the indicator file is available. So similar way. So this approach also, it will be similar. But here we have, we can set the timing also. Wait for five minutes, wait for one hour, wait for six hours or 12 hours if file is not available until that time. So you can do some other operation. Okay, or else you can, as I said, you can mention forever also. Forever, that means if file is there, then only run it. Any kind of file is there, then run it. Or else don't run it until the file is available, don't run it. So like that, we can set that dependency. If they ask the question, so you can you have to explain like this. I think I have given, I mean, uh, more information here. So at least in that one not, if you explain one or two also fine. Okay, the first thing, if they ask the question, so can you explain how to set the dependency between the workflow? If they clearly say that it's that this workflow is in the different folder, then directly you can come to this answer, this one. If they're not clearly saying that, you can ask the question there. So can you please tell me whether those workflows in the same folder or not? If they say same folder, this is the answer. So. We can create a worklets. So and those worklets we can call under the workflow. We can set the dependency over there. If they say same, if they say if it is not same, if if they say it's not same, then you have to jump into this answer. So there are many ways. So I can explain few. So you can say that. So by using a zero byte file. So whenever the workflow is completed, I want to create a zero byte file. So if the zero byte file available, then trigger the workflow. Else don't trigger it. Or else we have a many third party schedulers. So you can say a few names. So by using the third party schedulers, we can set the dependency and we can run the required workflow as per the requirement. And third one is event wait and event raise. By using this indicator file available, then trigger the workflow. Else, don't run it, wait until the file is available. So we can explain this. This is just like a five minutes answer. So that will be fine, I think. So if you explain clearly whatever I have explained here, that is enough. So that's all for today. So we'll see with a different uh, topic in the next session. Thanks everyone.